Welcome to another live stream from Emerald Hill Skies. And although it was stormy and rainy all day, we had a deluge of water. Uh, sure enough, as forecasted, all those clouds rolled away. And in fact, the water cleaned out all the uh, air pollution, if there was any. And we've got a crystal clear night here tonight. It's just after midnight. So this is being recorded on, uh, being live streamed rather, on the morning of uh, November 12th, just after midnight. I thought maybe what we ought to do is um, pick up um, um, a little bit of lore about uh, Betelgeuse. And if you notice here in Stellarium, we're looking at Betelgeuse. And just so you can find the star Betelgeuse, it's here in this constellation Orion. And I think most of us are familiar with seeing these three stars in Orion's belt. If you'd like to see the way... Um, uh, the artwork is supposed to look. Here's uh, this hunter. You know, Orion may be the only constellation in the sky that actually looks like what it is. A belt, a belt of a hunter. And he's got this club up in his right hand. And he's holding, what is that? The head of an animal he's killed. Medusa or whatever. An animal he's killed in his left hand. And he's kneeling here. There's his right knee and his left boot or sandal, whatever the case may be, his right shoulder is Betelgeuse, right there. Now, I thought it might be fun to be able to look at Betelgeuse, so we've got it right now, uh, a live view of Betelgeuse here at uh, Emerald Hills Skies. You know, Betelgeuse is a bright star. I think right now it's in the top 10, but in the infrared spectrum, I mean, in the top 10 of visible, but in the infrared spectrum, it is the brightest star in the sky. If we could only uh, turn our eyes to be able to see infrared. Um, let's compare some star colors. Let's see if we can find Rigel. So here's Rigel. Let's bring, let me switch you back over to Stellarium. Uh, here's Rigel. Let's bring Rigel to the center. And let's see if when we um, use our... See if we can cause our scope to um, to change over to Rigel. And uh, let's see, let's go over to um, Astro Planner. And um, let's just um, do an observation of Rigel. So we'll do um, a look up by star name. And we'll um, put in Rigel here and search and let's see if we can find Rigel. There it is. And add the selected. So um, there's Rigel. Is that Rigel? Hmm. Yeah, that's Rigel. Let's go, um, let's slew over to Rigel. And uh, back in SharpCap now, we're doing 10 second frames. And uh, this is at gain 100. You can see as the telescope slid away from Betelgeuse, this frame was just kind of in process. So that, uh, let me make sure you're seeing uh, SharpCap here. That's uh, Rigel scooting onto the frame there. And look at the, the difference in color, see how Betelgeuse was a reddish color. We even talked about it being high on the infrared scale. Uh, Rigel is actually a bluish white, very hot star. And again, remember, Rigel is also in the constellation Orion. It's just that Rigel is in the lower left sandal of uh, Orion's foot, so to speak, his left foot. Now, right in between those two stars, if you can find Betelgeuse, the right shoulder, and then if you can find uh, Rigel, the left foot, right in between those is a particularly bright star called Alnitak. And Alnitak is the rightmost star in the belt of three. So everybody try to remember that name, Alnitak. And it's interesting because Alnitak happens also 
to be in a very famous uh, nebula that's called, usually people refer to it as the Horsehead Nebula. So let's find that, the Horsehead Nebula. And one of the ways that is easy to find it is by remembering the name Barnard III. Now Barnard was a famous astronomer who um, he wanted to study dark nebula. And whenever you see a, a nebula listed with a B and then a number, that's from his catalog. He, he became famous because he cataloged all the dark nebula. You know, dark nebula, we don't really understand it, but one theory is it's uh, basically a bunch of carbon soot that is just floating in interstellar, interstellar space, and it's blocking our view of something. Um, so if it's in front of a, a bunch of maybe a reflection nebula or a hydrogen alpha uh, cloud that's lighting up and ionizing, if it's in front of that, then it makes these dark patterns uh, that are in front. Now, with our 10 seconds uh, and 100 gain that our Rasa telescope is making, uh, just make sure that you can see our Rasa telescope here. It's uh, basically out there about 200 feet out in the field, a very, very uh, moist night. I mean, there's so much dew on that scope right now. It probably looks like it's been in a rainstorm. There's so much water on it from the humidity from all those rains that happened today, and now temperature has dropped, and all that rain is on, that, that humidity is on the outside of the scope. So we're running a lot of uh, dew heater elements, and the camera has a dew heater element built in, uh, we've got a strip around the front corrector plate of our Rasa uh, telescope. We're, we're using a dew shield in front of the telescope, so you can see it there on top, uh, that's trying to keep the dew off very moist night. But uh, the, the dark nebula in front of these, uh, these uh, nebula that we're seeing here, you can see it's not showing up at all in sharp cap with this 10 second 100 um, gain. So what we're going to do is let's, um, let's do some live stacking. And what we do when we live stack is we, we basically tell um, the, the software here, our software is called sharp cap, that we're going to um, there you can see it come in with the ten, first 10 second frame. Uh, the stacking really works. Uh, let's back out so you can get the big picture here. Um, what we do is we, we start stacking one frame with another and the software averages the frames as they come in. And we have tonight, the first time I've ever done this, I've got a friend uh, named Jim from up in Ottawa, and he suggested that we bump up our white balance blue and our white balance red over in the image control panel of SharpCap. And you know, I had never done that before. And man, does it ever make a difference. Uh, we also uh, bumped up this brightness, this brightness uh, slider a bit to 160. So now we've got our white balance red on 70 and our white balance blue on 70. And you know what it does? It finally allows us to do away with this greenish tinge that our Celestron light pollution filter had always made. Um, our, all of our images had like a green tint to them. And you can see right now, this image doesn't. It, it, we are enjoying a good looking image here right away. This is just after 80 seconds. And look at this beautiful horse head that's already coming. I mean, it's not bad looking, is it? That See that horse head that's visible? Well, this horse head is Barnard 33. It's the dark soot in front of that red nebula that's glowing there. And uh, let's see if we can't um, get a picture of that in our... <clears throat> over in the Stellarium, the, the, this is kind of the map of the sky that we're using, kind of like a planetarium 
would show you on the dome, remember, when you went to the museum? This is like our planetarium view, but it's other software on the computer. Here's that horse head, uh, Barnard 33. But look, it's really in front of IC434. And that IC434 is the actual uh, hydrogen alpha ionizing cloud that's probably being uh, charged by the light from Alitac. And it, and it is charging this cloud and ionizing it, and that's causing the hydrogen to glow like a neon lamp would glow, except it's hydrogen instead of neon. And the horse said is quite by accident that this dark soot is, well, maybe it's not an accident. Maybe God wanted us to be able to see a horse head. And he thought that would be cool if, if we could see this, uh, this beautiful chess piece hanging up there in the sky like an Easter egg waiting for us to discover. Now remember, Alnitak is the rightmost star in the belt. So if you can find the rightmost star, if you can find Betelgeuse and Rigel, you'll know now that the Horsehead Nebula is right in between them, pretty much right in the middle. It's right there by Alnitak. Now another um, uh, interesting formation here that you'll also notice is the Flame Nebula. And the Flame Nebula is another dark, look at this dark matter that's in front of it, and then this nebula is being again, charged up by the light of Alnitak. This is probably a star birthing um, cloud of gas and stars are being built in, in this nebula, but there in front of it is this dark, some people have called this, um, what are some of the names? Burning Bush Nebula and the Ghost of Alnitak. <laughs> and some people have called it the Maple Leaf Nebula. You can see how it looks like that shape. Uh, Flame Nebula is another name that's used to describe this, but it really is typically NGC 2024 to uh, those of us that are in astronomy. So now let's go back to our, to our live stack and see how we're doing. This is just four minutes and 20 seconds. Uh, let's just make sure we're seeing all that we can see. We've got the sky pretty dark. We want to make sure we get as much out. So let's bring our mids up and maybe that'll brighten up that nebula a bit more make it come a little more alive and uh, by the way can you see this little nebula here starting to show up now it's a blue nebula in this case that is ngc 2023 and it's pretty visible if you can find rigel and kind of if you have good eyesight this reflection nebula is going to be visible to you. And if, again, that'll be real close to the horse head nebula. Now, you probably won't see the horse head by naked eye. But if you can find these two, then you'll notice, I bet, some kind of splotchy, hazy, fuzzy stuff around um, Alnitak and this uh, NGC 2023. So this is five minutes, and we're trying now to get to the point that we save our images after five minutes and move on to something else. So what we'll do is we'll save that. And you know, we might also just save a close up a screenshot of the horse head. So let's see if we can do that. Get our, oh, our screenshots not going to work within SharpCap tonight. Sometimes it doesn't do that. We'll just make that from this from this uh, big uh, picture we just grabbed. Now it's going to be the full, the full picture. But let's go back into Astro Planner and um, let's make an observation. And uh, let's say it looked like a chess piece in the sky. And then in an attachment. Now you might not see me grabbing this file. But I'm going to go out to um, the file picker window here and grab um, that picture that we just made, B33. And 
let's see if I can find that here. B33, looks like we caught maybe 33 frames of 10 seconds each. And there you see it popping in the window. See how it's the big view of the whole the whole scene that we had, not just a close up. Then here we um, we could also put it here because I think our picture is actually gonna look a little bit cooler. Uh, this is called add user image, and again, you might not see us going and picking this out, but um, but you'll see it perhaps when it pops in. We'll just call this uh, big picture of the horse head. And uh, this is a very, very far off view of it. But there you can see the horse head right in the middle of the frame. So let me make sure you were seeing that in Astro Planner. So you know, this kind of gives you the, um, the big picture now of what we do. This is kind of like the workflow. And I hope you've been able to remember this uh, so that you too can go back one day and find uh, up in the sky uh, you can go back and be able to find, uh, again, uh, Beetlejuice, the right shoulder of our friend uh, Orion the Hunter, uh, Rigel the Sandal, and right in the middle, Alnitak, with the Horsehead Nebula right here beside Alnitak, and that Flame Nebula right there beside Alnitak as well. So I hope you've enjoyed this, and I hope that that uh, next time you go out in the sky at night, you can look up and find Orion. It's just starting to raise. Now, it's really a winter constellation, but if you're up around 11 p.m., uh, Orion will be coming up from the east, just like a hunter rising up out of the sky. Thanks for joining us for this live stream from Emerald Hill Skies. Most of all, thanks to God for hanging that chess piece up there so we'd have something to find tonight, that chess piece of the Horsehead Nebula. Hope you'll stop back. If you like this kind of content, please do hit thumbs up. If you don't mind subscribing, if you like this kind of content, then you'll receive a notification when we do uh, new live streams like this. And it helps the channel uh, to be able to get the word out to other people who might find it. Hope you have a good evening. Thanks again for being with us here tonight. And good night from Emerald Hills Skies. God bless.